What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the show. I am super pumped today. Today's actually going to be a little bit different because I have two guests for you. So we'll have uh, some extra dynamic going on there. But, you know, they are lifelong creative entrepreneurs that actually met as actors in Hollywood. Uh, you may have seen them on shows like Grey's Anatomy, Criminal Minds, Entourage, and Jerry Maguire. But Hollywood is actually where they met, they married, and dove into the world of digital marketing. And now they own and operate their own digital marketing agency, which is called Holistic Made. And uh, that's based around their passion for healthy, holistic living. And they're also raising three amazing children under the age of four years old while doing all of this. So please welcome to the show, Jonathan and Sasha Schlossberg. Thank hello, you. Hello, thank you. That was awesome. Well, it's funny hearing the bio. I realize how insane we either sound or truly are. <laughs> I, it's a little bit of both. Yeah. We're definitely one of the crazies. That's for sure. That's awesome. Really Thank you guys so much for being here. Uh, you know, this is going to be a lot of fun. And I just really appreciate y'all taking time out of your day to, to jump on here and hopefully share some of your, you know, experience and wisdom with our audience today. We would love that. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, um, you know, I was doing a little research on you guys, as I kind of do with all my guests before we get on the show. And I stumbled across your YouTube channel, which is awesome. And I wanted to uh, ask you about something that I saw in there because it's actually something I'm kind of interested in. I noticed. Um, you did one of those ice baths, the 30 degree ice pump. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah, and Jonathan, you were mentioning how your first thoughts when you got in there was, I have to pee. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted to ask if you guys could just share a little bit more about that story because uh, like I said, that the whole ice bath thing is actually kind of neat. Yeah, so we were at, was it a Memorial Day? Something like, like that. It was like a Memorial Day friends barbecue and we, we have a like a sector we're a little bit crunchy in nature, but we have, so we have like normal friends, I guess you call them normies, but then we have like a whole crunchy sector. And so we were with some of our friends that went over to this barbecue in this guy's house and he is uh, certified in the Wim Hof method, which if you know anything about Wim Hof, you might wanna, you, you would probably find this very interesting, but this is a guy that created this whole method of breathing to regulate uh, his entire body. Like he climbs Mount Everest like in shorts it's and so, I found out about him via the Tim Ferriss podcast so like I'm a huge Tim Ferriss um fangirl all the stuff that he recommends so when we hear ice back and bath and Wim Hof I'm like I was pregnant so I couldn't do it I was like you gotta do this yeah so we're at this guy's house <laughs> and he has there. Jonathan is dipping his finger oh, yeah. in there like it's nah. like one of those like like when you were in college like the big beer troughs I mean you saw the video but it's like a beer trough full of water and just Ice. Bag, bags of ice um and so like he's like who's gonna do that and so like i was like well, I mean, why not peer pressure like, everybody was gonna do it but it was i mean it was interesting but it's terrifying at the same time the thought of doing because you you put your hand you know you put your hand into like reach a cold soda and like your hand freezes but so this friend of ours jesse um took us like there was a group of like probably like eight of us or nine mm -hmm. yeah uh all in his backyard uh took us through this whole breathing exercise and then one by one we all got in for was it a minute or I a minute it, and a half or I something think a i mean you saw, i don't know it was like somewhere between one and i think like one or one and a half minutes and it was uh it was pretty awesome like it was a really crazy experience and just to let all the audience no, I, I did not pee in the ice bath. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but it like. Where, where does your mind go? So like your body goes into the fight or flight. And so you have to, the breathing helps center you. And so like, like literally that's what I had to focus on because it was like terrifyingly shocking to the body. <laughs> and so if you don't control your mind, like I remember having an experience scuba diving once where my, my BCD was like really tight and I started to have a panic attack and I realized like I was safe 50, 60 feet under the water, but my mind wasn't saying so. And I had to like tell my mind that I was okay to calm my body down. It's, it was the exact same thing. Like you had to like get your mind right to calm your body so that you could sit there. That um, honestly sounds like natural childbirth, <laughs> like for real. Okay. So apparently now I can say that I've given. No, 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 no. no still no. <laughs> that's that's really cool and actually I am familiar with Wim Hof and uh, I have studied his method a little bit I haven't actually done the ice bath with ice but like the cold shower thing is something I've yeah. tried a few times and it really is um, invigorating and definitely sparks all of the senses and gets them all firing and you know it's an interesting thing what you just said about how 
you really have to control your mind, you know, to not let, to not really like freak out and have your body sort of go into shock, you know, while you're doing something like this. And it, it almost is the same in business, right? I mean, you really have to set your mind right first before you can move forward and be successful on, on anything that you're attempting to do. So it's, it's a weird parallel, but, um, yeah, anyway, I, I just thought that was really cool. And it's something I'd like to try, the, the whole ice bath thing. You should do it. So now we have a plan. When you come to Phoenix, Jesse's now opened up his own actual shop called Optimize with a Y. And he has different ice baths in there, infrared saunas. So we're going to go back. We're going to do it as a, because we're weird, we're going to do it as a date night. Get right. a sitter and then go in there, just the two of us, and do it in the next week or two. That sounds awesome. Yeah, if I if I come through Phoenix, I'm definitely gonna have you guys uh, show me that place for sure. Yeah. Anytime. That's really cool. Awesome. Well, you guys have sounds like a very interesting story. I mean, how do you go from being actors to being digital marketers? You gotta like tell us about that. Well, it's funny. We met waiting tables, um, and we would each. Neither one of us are particularly good at jobs. I usually took it like when I wanted to burn down the building. I knew it was time for me to find a new one. And so I would find a new one and then leave, just like cut and run. Jonathan, on the other hand, would just like burn it to the ground, get fired, literally burn Pretty it much. down and then move on. So the two of us together would find a better job, bring the other one. So together we worked at four different restaurants um, and we wanted to like, I had done the thing where you look up how to make money online and then you put in your email address and you got to like file email bankruptcy because now you're getting a million emails a day about like your credit score. So I didn't, looking into building a business online, it didn't seem possible. So he and I started diving into real estate because like, what else do you do if you don't have any skills besides acting in Hollywood? It was real estate or Pilates. And then we realized very quickly that we did not want to do Pilates or real <laughs> estate. Um, and through, it was actually because of a selfish nature of wanting to meet a casting director. A casting director invited us to uh, like a little event it ended up being a network marketing party. But we weren't scared. We're like, done. It's and a business. And we're like, and it looked doable. And so we were like, sure, why not? We were like working together. We can do this. It's easy. Which it wasn't because you need to have influence and you need to have people that would be interested in doing other things. And all we had were broke people that figured the only thing they could do was being an actor. Like we had no fear. The whole where you have to message or reach out to or make your list of 100. Like we did the whole thing we put in the work um but we didn't we didn't know people and at that point we're like okay well then clearly we started looking at the internet because that's where all the people are that want these things and then she got pregnant yeah and she had horrible 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 morning sickness that like literally made being social and, and the company was more of like a go and meet people thing like it just it, it just devastated like, everything like so when you see people and you hear morning sickness and it looks like oh you throw up in a trash can in the morning and you're done like I was incapacitated all day long throwing up. it was horrible yeah so then that really made a business on the internet more appealing and so we started looking for that and then we fell into through some happenstances of meeting our mentor who was extremely successful in real estate but also extremely successful in network marketing but also a, an incredible internet marketer, digital marketer. And so we started learning and working with him and he tutored and just mentored us. And we ended up like just learning by trial by fire, like doing it and failing forward. Um, and so we did that for a number of years and then we went to work for his publishing company. Uh, Sasha is the uh, lead strategist and content creator and I was the VP of ops where we launched eight, seven or eight verticals over the course like, of like 18 months. We're talking. The, the full thing, blogs, but built around the intention of selling and monetization and events. Branding and products and yeah. funnels and everything that goes along with it. So we did that. And then July of last year, uh, we were pregnant now with our third, um, our daughter, and we had seen the writing on the wall. Yeah, um, I mean, because we worked closely with it, we knew funding was drying up. So we both ended up out of a job while pregnant with the third kid. On the same day. And so, yeah, but we'd already were freelancing a bit here and there for like clients for, for businesses that we frequented. So through a chat with a friend, the long story short is we're like, okay, we're going to build this agency around our existing clients. And so that's how we ended up with a very specific company. That's awesome. 
That's awesome. And, and I think there's a lot to unpack there because obviously, you, guys, you know, you have, you have a lot of uh, issues in the way that you have to overcome, right? I mean, having a baby, definitely, I, I don't have one, but I have to imagine that, that that really dials up like the the intensity level, right, to 11 on all the decisions that you make. So I'm curious as, I mean, you said sort of through happenstance, you found your mentor. Were you looking for a mentor? Was that something that you were thinking about at that time? Or like, how did, I mean, how did that actually happen? And, and then also explain, if you don't mind, like, what is the importance of having a mentor? That's actually a really good point to get to, too, that most people overlook. But so I, at the time I was 40. Mm hmm I was 40 and I had always wanted a mentor, but this is like when I was acting. So I always thought I was going to get some like acting mentor, but I never found one. So I always wanted one, but I didn't know how to find one. I didn't know how to get one. I didn't know how to work with one. And it just, it, it was like, like the, whatever it is, the universe wasn't, cons was conspiring against me or it just wasn't happening. And we were at an event um, where, let me cut in on that too, because here's something key, because we were, keep my hands like this because we were all in, we went to events, we showed up to, everything we could anything where we could learn we were there we and like were, we were sitting in the front row we with would our bring, baby with our baby like 11 week old daughter strapped to her chest we like, were on webinars we were putting ourselves out there now not so much um, wow different but, ways so like we went to this one event and we we're like you know we always tried to go vip because like we found always at events if you're ever going to events that's what you want to do you just get to meet better people you get to be closer to the action so those are some for any of your listeners that are new in the entrepreneurial space that are looking to do this definitely go to events VIP and upgrades. vip upgrades for sure it may look like a bigger expense on the front end but it's definitely worth it always um so we would do that and, and so at this event this one guy spoke and he was like intense and like really successful and i was like that's who i want to like work with and then I went to the bathroom and as I was going to the bathroom, he was coming out and I didn't ask him to be my mentor. I just was kind of like, hi. And he was like, mm. and that was the first meeting, like outside of the bathroom. And then after a couple of events, he just, he just, you know, we stood out. We were too, I appeared younger than I really was, but too young, you know, young family with this like 11 and 14 week old little girl strapped on a baby carrier to our chest sitting in the front row. Like, people just took notice of us and we kept showing up and we kept doing those things. And finally um, there was something going on and he reached out and, you know, I showed up and then we just started working more closely and he saw how committed we were to it um, that it just kind of sort of evolved. Yeah. Um, really cool. Now to answer your question about uh, importance, it is, I think one of the most important things that you can have um, is finding a mentor. And I think what's also powerful, and tell me if you agree or disagree, is that with a mentor, doesn't mean you pick one mentor and they're your mentor for life. It's, you know, you find the mentor that's right for you then, you may outgrow your mentor. You may go in a different direction. Like we've kind of, we still have a lot of respect and we still work, not work with, but like we'll communicate with, if we have a question, we'll ask them. But we've kind of at this point outgrown that mentorship and have other resources as mentors now. It's, yeah, it's kind of like the hermit crab thing. Like you, you search for the right shell that fits, and then for a while you might be without a shell. But I actually, on, on my blog at one point, did a post about why you don't need a mentor, because you'll often find people who aren't necessarily ready for a mentor, like, like messaging, hey, can I pick your brain for coffee? And most mentors aren't, they don't have that time. They don't have that, that time resource, but that doesn't mean like they can't mentor you in a different way. So many people have put out so much content that you can oftentimes learn so much from someone without needing their one-on-one -on -one attention. So I Correct. advocate for people, like stalk the people, not literally, please don't go to jail or be offensive, but like go, look at all their different social profiles, look at their YouTube videos, learn from them that way, because there's that saying that you're the sum of the five people you spend the most time with, but we're putting so much in our brains that you don't have to literally be person to person with someone. By the time we got this mentorship, we were, we were ready. We were on that level. We weren't like a beginner who was, who could have learned the information via podcasts and YouTube videos at that point. And you can, and you can also, you know, if you, you don't have anybody or know anybody that you can ask to be a mentor, books are great mentors, you know, go and Google, you know, top 10 books for entrepreneurs and read those 
books and read all the books by them. Subscribe to this podcast and yeah. listen to every single episode. It's, yeah. you know, it's really diving in. And, and at the same time, you know, having a mentor doesn't mean like we talked every day. It doesn't mean like we were emailing every day. You know, we might go a couple of weeks. In the beginning, it was a lot less communication, you know, and then as we started working, actually working together, then it became daily communication because we were all working together. But, you know, a mentor can be someone that you sit down with once every six months or someone you email once a month. And still get that mentorship. Yeah. I, love that. I love that. And actually, um, that's that's a really good point, which you mentioned, Sasha, about the fact that you like the mentor doesn't even need to know you exist, you know. And and I've I've said that before on the show. Like, reach, you know, like you said, there's so many people out there creating content, and the ones that are actually successful, like you can tell, you know, versus the ones that are just getting started. But you have to find someone, and Jonathan, like you mentioned, someone who is where you want to be. And, and just like watch what they're doing, you know, learn from them. And, and there's so much content out there. These people, again, they don't have to know you exist for you to be able to learn from them. So I think that's awesome. And uh, Jonathan, what do you have like the Benjamin Button disease? Because if you were 40 a few years ago, man, <laughs> What's the magic trick there, man? You look great. <laughs> they, oh, you're so, look at you. I mean, I look about as good as you. <laughs> um, yeah. No. Uh, that's funny. I, I have no idea. To be, I'll, I'll tell you. I, I, my parents' genes. I, I really have nothing to do with it. Uh, I know. Youthful living. Youthful living. I, I'm a kid at heart. I always thought of myself as like Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes. Uh, and I mean, I don't drink anymore. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs. Like, crazy. This is how crazy we are. We went plant. My, my best friend, two weeks ago, said you got to watch this documentary. What the health? And we've watched like literally every health documentary fed up and watched it. And literally the next day we gave away like All eight grocery meat. bags full of worth of like meat and chicken wow. and literally gone plant based. And then we watched that like, sugar film a few days ago and cut all refined sugars. Like we're, we're insane. And I don't recommend it for everybody, but like we're that type of people. You guys, you guys, it's not, I wouldn't call it insane. I mean, you guys are just, you're doers and I love we're woke. Guys. <laughs> that's what I hear. That's what the young kids say today. Know. We're woke. Oh, Yo, you're woke. Yeah, for sure. You're conscious, man. Y'all are awake. And the thing is, is you're always striving to better yourselves, which cl is clearly evident, you know, and, and I think that's a really important um, just uh, trait to have if you want to be successful and if you want to grow and, and, you know, create anything worth worth creating, you know, um, you always have to be trying to, to change you know, what's going on. And if you see something not working or it just doesn't feel like, you know, it's, it's jiving with you, like you have to look in another area to see, you know, what else can you try? And clearly you guys are testament that, you know, trying new things and, and um, you know, looking out and searching for new opportunities clearly creates growth. And as long as you're always moving forward, then you're, you're, you're living, a, I think, a very good life, a full life, you know, I think it's important to, and like you say, living youthfully, like always having fun, you know, like enjoying the things that you're doing. I mean, I'm having a blast right now having a conversation with you guys, you know, and, and I, I could be bummed out because like I said, it's raining outside, you know, and the weather's terrible, but it's all about, you know, looking at life in a, in a positive light. And um, I think that's awesome. So I, I hope, you know, for everyone listening, that you're, you're picking up some of these vibes and hopefully that can inspire you to, to try to be a little bit more optimistic in your life if you're having trouble with that for sure. Uh, and and um, anyway, let's move on to the next topic of conversation, which is this digital landscape and this crazy social media world we live in. You know, as we were talking about how you can basically stalk anyone that's putting content out there, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunities out there as well for business and, you know, for creating, uh, you know, like a side hustle, if that's something you're interested in. So I'm wondering for you guys, in terms of the digital marketing space and, um, you know, everything that you're doing online, what is exciting you about the digital landscape at the moment? I like that it's constantly shifting. I, that part to me blows my mind. One of my friends posted, she was kidding, but the, she was a friend of hers brand manager. And I was thinking that this is, these aren't even terms that existed two years ago, five years ago. So, so the fact that there's room for absolutely everyone, that the right opportunities are, are there. I think that's amazing that literally anybody could really decide to have their own business. Yeah, I think the, the opportunity in front of people is infinitely greater than it was five years ago and 10 years ago. Um, that 
we, you know, we live in this gig economy world, right? Where people are like, they could go and drive for Uber or Airbnb their house. And, and that's awesome. But there's so much, there's like so much available to you to feed yourself with great stuff and opportunities to really like enhance your life just by finding something online. Um, you can, you can literally touch anyone anywhere in the world with a click of a button. And that is so cool. I think so I cool. think of that a lot because I go, you know, I spend time because we have a baby sitting there nursing her and I'm like, okay, I could be scrolling or I could be reading a book on script. Like I look at the, the, what moms had available to them. And it was like, I could have my groceries delivered. I don't have to spend that, waste that time leaving the house, which means I have the ability to, to be more productive outside of motherhood than, than moms had even 10 years ago. But, but that also keeps my hustle game and it. And I have to check myself that I'm not beating up myself too hard for not getting more done because there is so much that you, you can do it. It, it, it presents other, like nowadays, I feel like moms have to, and people in general have to work to, to unplug and check out because we can't be productive all the time as well. It sets up, it's, there's so many opportunities, but also such interesting challenges now. Yeah, for sure. And I can see how, you know, just like you say, the the convenience that's come from different services that are now available, like you say, getting food delivered, uh, your groceries, basically like the shop. I mean, really anything can be delivered pretty much to your house now. Like the <laughs> the need to leave the house is, is becoming less and less, you know, as convenience gets built in with technology and, and all of these things. And that does leave us with time, right? And so we have a lot more time on our hands and it can be really easy, like you say, to kind of judge yourself if, you know, if your goal is to create a business or let's say, you know, a side hustle or you're like, you're really trying to build something. I mean, you're right. You cannot be productive 100% of the time. But now that we have more time on our hands, it's like, you know, you, you start, you, you want to fill that time with something. And a lot of people, unfortunately, will fill too much of that time with stuff like Netflix and, you know, stuff that isn't really doing anything for you. But we have, I mean, that's kind of part of that balance, you know, and, and really understanding, you know, what, what are the goals for today? And as long as we check off these goals for today, then it can be called a successful day, you know, and, and you have to have fun in life. I mean, you have to go out and play with the kids, right. And do things that you enjoy yeah. and that, f that fulfill you on a, uh, you know, on a spiritual level, a personal level, because without, you know, without that fulfillment, how can you really give to anybody on a professional level? Right. So I think that's, that's really important, but I agree with the fact that the internet is opening up opportunity for everyone and there's so much space. And what's, what's amazing to me about it is like, you can build a business around like anything, any, any, anything you're interested in, whether it's like some people do it around video games. I saw uh, an interview where a woman had built her business completely off the back of Disney. Like she just teaches people how to save money by going to Disneyland, you know, yeah. and she has a whole course around like how to, you know, do like Disney stuff on the cheap. And I mean, there's, there's, it just blows my mind how much is out there. You know, it's really, it's, we live in an amazing time. <laughs> yeah. Agree entirely. So, um, on that balance side of things, right. Because, you know, as you say, it's easy to beat ourselves up if we're not doing it. So how do you guys manage? I mean, you've got the three kids, you've got the business, you guys. It is not easy. It, it is definitely a challenge. And it is a challenge that we talk about. We argue about, <laughs> we fight about like, in like many times during the week, you know, that we even had a, a, a chat today because like, so at first, okay, let's cut to some other. So we had a co-working space. So I would leave, we, we could leave or I, you know, I do a lot more of the, like the heavy lifting work. And so I would leave to go work on like building ads or doing stuff like in, it was good because I could get out of the house, but then they sold the building. And so we live like in Phoenix, but we live like really far North where there's like, it's, it's not rural, but there's not, it's not like in the center of like Metro, you know, where there's stuff everywhere. And so ended up deciding just to like bring like you're in our office right now. Like this is where I work from. And so being able to get out of the house made it a lot easier, but being in the house has been challenging because we got to back up even further on that one. So we decided, <laughs> <laughs> we decided about, uh, well, we've been in this house just a year and a few months. Mm -hmm. Our plan when we moved into this house was that we were either going to move back to LA 
or sell everything and travel. Like so, you. So we went way Just small. Just not the van. So yeah. we're in a very small house and I was pregnant with a third kid. Well, it became very clear to us that we're actually meant to stay put and build this agency and grow some roots here. So we don't know what the future holds, but for now we're for sure here. And for two people that are extremely decisive, nothing has presented itself as clear for us as in regards to moving homes. So we're staying put, but it's a three bedroom. This is our office. Two feet away is our master and the baby's so, in there. And so it was like, like we went, we moved from LA in like an old, like 1920s, like, it was big, but three bedroom, like maybe 11, 1200 square feet. This is when we then just had one child and yeah. moved here, got 2,500 square feet, two like car garage for, for less, for less with, you know, like all that. But it seemed wasteful. And, and we, we were like, live intentionally. We're like, wait, what are we doing with yeah. all of this space? We like purchased furniture to put it in it. And then we were like, this is too, we were like not using three of the rooms. So we're like, well, let's go small. And we went from 2,500 to like 1,450. And then added a third baby. So when you have the kids' room close to your bedroom, close to, and you're trying to sleep train, potty train, your run office. a business, the office is right here. We run into amazing challenges of constraint. Actually, let's add in that it's also like 110 degrees. So it's not like I can take the kids outside. So, so we're like, we're in this house. Yes. Yeah, so, like on top of each other. So it's, look, it's a challenge. And we work together, we live together, we raise our kids together. So as I like to say, like our five years of marriage together is like most people's like 30 years of marriage <laughs> and how the amount of time we spend in proximity and with each other. Like I don't go off to an office and come back eight hours, nine hours later and like, hi, let's have dinner and let's talk about our day, you right. know? And so the, the thing I think that would, that keeps at least me sane is that I spend a lot of time going, well, I am so excited for what the future holds in our bigger house. <laughs> and when we have a bigger office space, cause we like the idea of you're talking intentional living, we don't want to add in a commute to an office because what's the point of that? Like, where's your freedom there? So we, I think another thing that keeps us sane is looking for like the learning and all of these things like okay so how do we how do we live intentionally within these constraints you know what's what's our what do we envision in our future like how can we improve this and then building in intentional you know communication time like he and i have a separate marriage meeting and then we have a separate business meeting nearly every week some weeks we skip but that allows us to make sure everything is like how can we improve these these obvious challenges that are going to be built in we we you know we schedule date nights so that we can do something that is not work related um to the best of our ability we're still if he gets a facebook ad alert or something we're still gonna be I work on balance know. yeah it's, it's a work in progress Right, right. Well, I can definitely uh, see that there are extra struggles there with the kids and everything like that. And I understand the struggle of the carpet commute, you know, where, like you say, your, your office is in your house. I mean, sometimes it can feel a little stifling too at times. At least that was my experience when I had my house. Like I would just go from my bedroom to the living room where my office was. And it's like, you just feel like you're always in the same environment. So sometimes creativity can be a little stifled and, you know, you do need to kind of separate yourself from that environment sometimes to, you know, get the juices flowing again. But um, I, I, I love that you guys have date nights scheduled and you have like the specific meetings, you know, marriage meeting and then business meeting. I mean, that's awesome. And I think uh, it's probably yeah. really important, right? It's probably really I important. Her props on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, strategy, strategy is my thing. Like we, we try to do division of labor. So he does like the time sensitive stuff because it's not practical for me with the kids. He'll do more one-on-one -on -one client communication. I'll do writing or, or look at like, okay, how can we improve this part of our lives? Um, and that, that helps. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I have to imagine working directly side by side with your significant other can be very challenging at times and, um, you know, also very rewarding, but you're, I mean, like you say, you're both very, um, you have your opinions and, and your, uh, what was the word you said that you, you are very decisive, right? You're very decisive. And when you, you know, you want something, that's the way you want it. Well, if you both have different opinions about that, that can be a problem, right? So I'm curious, uh, I mean, obviously there's that whole dynamic of working with your significant other, but like, what is some advice for, that you could give people maybe that have, you know, a spouse or, you know, someone that they're very close to, but isn't supportive of what they're doing? Like, how can they still manage that relationship maybe, but, you know, 
like maintain focus on what they're doing. Any advice in that arena? What do you think? I think, I mean, that's so tough. Part of me says just run. No, no, I'm kidding. Um, I think honestly having communication and that, so like if it's important to you and the other person's not on board to continue to communicate into like, if it's that important to you, you need to stick with it. And sometimes you have to fight through, like they may not believe in you. It, it really finding out what the root of, of the lack of support is. Um, I don't know. It's hard because I haven't been able to relate to that because we're we, on the same page. Well, we have a, we have a, we have a small version of that. I feel completely compelled to build an Instagram following. Drives okay. him insane. Well, yeah. So that is so, so so it does. So we do have a version of that. You message me. Oh my god, oh, oh, look, I have more followers. I don't well, I don't do that because I have like three followers and it's been, but the thing is is that I'm a compulsive creator. I've always been a creator. If you look at like notepads from when I was a small child, I would read a book and then write it into a play. Like I've literally always been this way. So for me, Instagram is the future, it's the platform to microblog on. Um, and because our lifestyle is so unique, so I feel passionate, I feel compelled to do it. So it does drive him nuts. Um, but I do try to be supportive and I yeah. go through, I go through my phases where I'm like, Oh, you just, are you, him, are you, uh, you heard him mocking me three seconds ago. Like it, it's, it's a thing, but we try because ultimately we, I know it's important to her and that's, and vice versa. We've had things where like I shut down. I was like, you're not doing Facebook ads. This was years ago because it was literally always wasting money. And so he kind of, he didn't agree. Years ago, just so everybody knows, yeah. <laughs> years ago. <laughs> now we do it for clients. Uh, but the thing is, is that incentivized him to actually truly put in the work to learn it. Like he learned ads. And then finally it was like, okay, he clearly knows it's really important to him. So do it. And now it's literally like a major part of our business. Um, so so we, become great at something. And yeah. I guess that, like if you don't get the support, don't be resentful. Use it as fuel to like literally become an expert and, at it. And nobody can argue with a hobby. Like if he's like, well, I'm just watching training videos because it's my hobby. Fine. Like, what am I going to say? Don't have a hobby. Like if I'm like, well, Instagram is my hobby. And then he'll be like, really? I'm going to have so many hobbies after this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, why are you doing It's my new hobby. <laughs> yeah. You just screwed yourself with that one, Sasha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But that's the other thing too, is for real, like he can say that because it's so important to me. We can both easily be workaholics. I have a different perspective because we have kids and I want the kids to know us as present intentional parents. So I'm like, like crazy about like, let's make sure we're unplugging. So for him, I'm like, please leave the house. Please have hobbies. So like, if he has a hobby, it's yeah. I'm my be hobby is sort of my work. I love it. Yeah. And we were talking about whether it's your calling or your passion or your purpose. I don't know the answer to that. We're still figuring that one out. But yeah, I mean, and here, uh, look, this is not a relationship advice show and I'm no expert, but I know because of where we are in our relationship and that we have 100% open communication and trust. And even if there's challenges or issues we work through and we talk through it, that's how we're able to stay on the same page. If, you, if you're in a relationship with somebody and it's a valuable relationship, you know, you're going to hope that you have that trust and that integrity and, and that communication so that whether they love it or not, they still support you. If they so adamantly don't support you in that, I mean, you do have to look at that after a while. I mean, to be quite honest, like, you know, when I moved to LA, my parents supported me. You know, there was always some that were like, when are you going to quit? But I know friends that moved there that their parents were like, never supporting. Right. You know, and you couldn't convince them otherwise, even if they got a job, the parents were like, okay, I want you to go to law school. And the number of people that folded for that, and how much resentment and upset and anger does that build? Exactly, exactly. And you know what you said about using it almost as fuel, right? Putting like a chip on your shoulder, like, all right, tell me what I can't do and then watch me. Right. That is that is a great way to look at it, too. But honestly, I love watching you guys just answer the questions because you're like two parts of the same brain. And <laughs> I love how you work together. It's awesome. And no, this isn't a relationship show, but I think relation, everybody is in a relationship. Everybody can, you know, can benefit from the amazing bond that you guys have created and how you communicate with each other and learning how to, you know, use that communication in their lives with it, whether again, whether it's with a parent, whether it's with a spouse or, 
you know, a friend. Like we have to be able to communicate with the people we care about so that they can know what we're interested in, you know, and where, what we're doing in our lives. Cause at the end of the day, I, I, I genuinely believe that, you know, uh, people that love you, even if they don't understand what you're doing, they, they want you to be successful. They want you to do well. They want you to be happy. So even if they may not understand what path you're on trying to get there, you know, at, in some part of their mind, they are supporting you. Right. So I think that's, uh, that's really cool. And, you know, again, it's just a blast watching you guys um, work through, you know, your ideas together. So I, I, I love that you are both on the show. I really appreciate you guys being here. And I got to know what, what do you guys do like for fun, fun? Like what other than jumping in ice baths, like what are some things you guys do for fun? We like adventures. Yeah. Rock climbing. Like we like to try new things. We like to hike when, well, I when, like to hike. He puts up with it. No, I enjoy it. When it's nice weather. It's not my first go-to. I have a drone. I haven't flown it in a while, and I, I enjoy, you know, the techie gear stuff and stuff like that. We like to travel. We like um, food. Yeah, that which is interesting because now that we've like two weeks ago went plant based, it like, I mean, we used to, I we would just meet in whatever, and now it's 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 unique. Um, that gives us a new adventure to like check out all the new vegan places that are popping up. Yeah, but sure. to be quite honest, it's like you know we'll go on a date now, we'll go to a movie and and whatnot, but we're so busy with our business and raising three kids um, and, you know, to add fuel to fire, like now we're homeschooling two of our little ones. And so it's like, as you add more into your life and you grow a family, like your, your attention to putting on hobbies and things that you get to do sort of do detract and come down a, a lot more because I you disagree have, entirely on that one though, because I need to be able to have adventures and hobbies for my sanity. I'm not saying that you don't get to have them. I'm saying the amount of time is less oh the time is way less but the emphasis i put on them is greater she's right i'm wrong what ever <laughs> that's a no, smart man <laughs> I, I yeah i have to put time into them for my own sanity because mental health is supremely important to me absolutely i, I mean it's it's got to be something that you hold you know in high regard if you don't want to live like a, a life of stress, you know, I mean, you have to be able to take time for yourself. And I, I get it. I mean, you guys have so much going on. It, it probably is very hard to find any extra time where there's like nothing happening. So you have to schedule it all in. Um, oh, and sorry, I thought of one. Yes, please. We've gotten into like obstacle course racing, like Tough Mudder oh and totally Spartan races. Yeah. And so we have one coming up in November. So like our trainer actually on it is it like trains people for that so um we've started doing that and just have really loved yeah, getting into those signed up for four races and we've done three th th four three th we've done three or four two since we've had our eight month old baby awesome yeah that actually is a lot of fun something i, I enjoy a lot as well the, the obstacle course race and i think uh was it spartan race even has like the kids races now yeah where, you know i don't know it's how it's all, but are there our daughter who's four and a half she yeah. just did, the, did the half mile oh. race about a month ago. So I ran it with her and then Sasha did the Spartan stadium sprint. And then I did the stadium sprint after. That's and cool. then our two little guys uh, are signed up for one in the spring. They were actually talking about it today. Were they? They were, they were talking about doing a mud run. They're so excited. I was like, it's not till next year, which they don't have concept <laughs> They have no concept But they're time. really excited. They'll be like, is it today? They'll wake up tomorrow. Is it today? No, it's in a year. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, right on. Well, that's that's definitely a good thing to do. And it brings the whole family together. And plus, it's a healthy exercise. So uh, I'm all for it. Obstacle course yeah. is a blast. Yeah, for it's sure. A good mental exercise. Right. And that, Any, anytime you can work out your brain. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, very cool, guys. Well, this has been a blast. And I have one last question for you, which uh, I'd like you each to answer this individually. But you know, considering where you're at right now in your journey and all the experience that you've built so far, what is a piece of advice that you would give to yourself maybe five or 10 years ago? Um, uh, okay. So be easy on yourself. Like it is literally a journey. We could not have told you that when we started six, seven, six years ago, that what we thought we were going to be doing by starting in real estate would end us to our own agency in Phoenix with three kids, you know, specifically in the health and wellness and like intensely driven space. 
you, you could have put a million dollars on the table and said like, where are you going to be? And I would not have chosen that. So it is, it's, it's so cliche it is the journey. And it's sort of like, you got to just go through it. And like, if we had been tied to doing this specifically what we wanted, like thought we were supposed to be doing and tethered ourselves to that, we wouldn't end, have ended up where we are with all these great experiences. So like really just jump in, dive in and let it unfold. My answer is kind of similar, but kind of opposite. Like something that I figured out is that I have no ability to predict the future at all. But what I've, but what I always have an unwavering belief in is in my success and my future success. So I have no doubt that we're building something great. And I've always felt that way. But I also know that what the future holds is not predictable. So to keep the mindset right and to be open to opportunities and as much as I can be opinionated to know that, that I'm going to be wrong plenty of the time. And so like, if he is super passionate about something like um, creating Facebook ads that eventually I'm going to go, okay, like maybe this is the direction we're supposed to go in. So being, being completely dead set in your own success and confidence in your future success, if you don't believe in yourself at the moment, um, but being flexible about how you get there. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Belief is really, really important. And I, I agree. I think that's something we have to believe in ourselves. And then, but at the same token, like, like you say, don't judge yourself too much, you know, and, and give yourself the freedom to try things and to fail and, you know, to learn from that experience and move forward. So I love it, guys. I, I've, I, this has really been uh, a special a special interview, and I appreciate you guys being on here and sharing your stories with us. Um, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you and, you know, what you got going on in your world? Uh, so our, our agency site is holisticmade.com, so if people want to see what we do, uh, they can go there. Everywhere on social, we're at Holistic Made, uh, and that's M-A-D-E, not made like the cleaner. Um, and then my Instagram, Sasha does things, but that's S A S C H A. And then I'm Jonathan does things. And then we have Lauren does things and Ryland <laughs> does things. And then oh, I'm so angry. Then Catherine is Catherine does things too, because oh, somebody oh. has, and like this girl has like no posts and I've like messaged her and she's like not responding. I'm like, give me the name. <laughs> and we have our family, our, our family lifestyle blog that is coming our yes dot life coming soon to a theater near you awesome awesome well you guys it has been a pleasure and i will definitely link all of that stuff down below for everyone listening make sure you go check out jonathan and sasha they are killing it as a dynamic duo running a business and if you need help with social media marketing definitely check them out because they can hook you up so i really appreciate it guys thanks again so much for being here this has been a blast oh, this Thank has been you. so much fun thank you so much